We agreed. Say no more than we have to. Stay out of the public eye. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons you should be watching Yellow Jackets. Hey, Nat. It's been a while. Yeah. You haven't changed. For this list, we're looking at reasons why this innovative new Showtime series will delight both new and veteran TV fans. Tell us what you think the buzz is all about in the comments. Number 10. Karen Kusama, Ashley Lyle, and Bart Nickerson. We're not gonna starve to death. Okay, when the rescue team gets here. If it gets here. Don't say that. Yellow Jackets has some busy worker bees behind its inception. Co-creators Ashley Lyle and Bart Nickerson stem from work on quality projects like Narcos Mexico and The Originals. They've also collaborated on Dispatches from Elsewhere, a premise that introduces ordinary people to extraordinary situations in Twilight Zone tradition. Time to take some risks, right? Filmmaker Karin Kusama directed the Yellow Jackets pilot and serves as one of the series' executive producers. Her credentials include Girl Fight and the oddball teen horror comedy Jennifer's Body. Anybody that we know? We know everyone. Sucks to be them, I guess. All three creative minds seem to gravitate to one-of-a-kind ideas that, for better or worse, get people talking. We can't wait to see what they'll do to make their new endeavor something unforgettable. Guys! Guys, there's a lake! There's a lake! I saw it from that hill. It looks about four or five miles away. Number 9. The Mysteries Yellow Jacket's many unanswered questions only make number 9 on the list, and that is a sign of exciting things to come. What if the rescue team comes? Do you think they're taking their time on purpose? If they knew where we were, they would be here already. There may not be as many riddles as a certain other plane crash incited mystery show, but there are enough to tangle up some Reddit threads. What really drives the survivors to cannibalism? What's with that strange symbol? Who was the man in the cabin? How many survived the wilderness? What really happened to Travis? Who is the unfortunate sacrifice from the opening scene? The first few minutes alone had viewers buzzing with theories. The narrative also jumps between two time periods, creating rampant possibilities for red herrings and revelations. I take it you know why I'm here. The postcard. Yellow Jackets could be gearing up to become a great new water cooler show. Number 8. Genre Blending I didn't send it, silly. See? I got one too. Take any screenwriting class and the teacher will warn you to avoid mixing genres like the plague. And God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. God help you. That's because usually only the most skilled writers can marry contrasting dramatic categories and make them believably inhabit the same world. Yellow Jackets is part mystery suspense, part survival thriller, part coming-of-age drama, part supernatural horror, and a little dose of high school comedy. The joy of this mashup is that the story is ripe with tonal shifts and unpredictability. And that makes it fun. The what? Citizen detective. We're like, um, we're like private investigators, except for no one hired us or asked for our help. We work together online to solve cold cases. Disappearances, murders, it's super fun. There's a wide range of audiences who are likely to be enticed by at least one aspect of the show. And it's a rush to go from crying to laughing to screaming all before the next commercial break. Split this water. Close your eyes and pretend it's bacon. Number 7. The Time Periods right 90s nostalgia seems like it's been popular since 1999 became 2000. Yellow Jackets is a tale of two time periods, as we follow the characters both as surviving adults in the present day and as teens in 1996. There used to be a green tower <laughs> alone on the, the sea. sea. <laughs> you became the light on the dark side. The show magnificently transports us back to the 90s with a soundtrack of everything from Smashing Pumpkins to Salt and Peppa. And vibrant colors and costumes are likely to ring true for premillennium babies. Scenes that occur in the 2021 time period feel distinctly different and seem to subtly long for the bygone era. Shows like Stranger Things have already proven that audiences love this kind of time travel. 
jumping between both decades is fun and authentic. And it's an effective and immersive world building technique. Number six, handling addiction and mental illness. The scariest part of fiction often occurs when it's invaded by the traumas of reality. Yellow Jackets doesn't shy away from disorders, bravely depicting issues like shock, PTSD, and survivor's guilt. Damaged characters like Natalie grapple with alcoholism and drug addiction, and their portrayal here feels disquietingly genuine. After they rescued us, I... I lost my purpose. Unstable minds like Misty's are caustically lonely and potentially psychotic, while Thaisa wrestles with troublesome sleepwalking that threatens to alienate her loved ones. He's seen me do it, Shauna. He's seen me do it. He thinks there's some other version of me. He calls it the bad one. None of these ailments define the characters cursed with them, but are rather partial organic elements of their personalities. Because Yellow Jackets gives us a nuanced sense of what these conditions actually feel like, rather than caricatures, the show pays respect to real-world addiction and illness, while also enhancing its own fictional universe. You can't be here. I don't think I'm making myself clear. You don't understand. I'm afraid I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> or Stammy, please, baby. Number five, sharp writing. Speaking of combating caricature, Yellow Jackets will likely hook you with relatable three-dimensional characters, even before the mystery and horror set in. You're obviously hiding something from me, and it's making me feel crazy. Remember when your parents first separated and you told me the reason your dad wasn't around as much was because he got a new job as the president at Hello Kitty? That was more convincing than you're being right now. The depiction of adolescence ascends typical teen stereotypes, showing them as flawed and foul-mouthed young adults who make adult decisions. By contrast, the grown-ups can behave like children, and they often act in ways contrary to their words. Kevin Dan, the goth kid? Well, he's a cop now. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, and he has two kids, and... Oh, dear. That sounds a bit complicated. Not to me. Commonly delineated scenes have been written in invigorating new ways by characters who all speak just a little differently from each other. Like, have you ever heard someone's backstory told as a haiku? The band was a bust, met a girl, and... It up. <laughs> it's a job, I guess. The writers know how humans tick, and it's absorbing to watch them prove it with each new episode. Number four, the young cast. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, okay? I have no idea what's right or wrong out here. I was just following my gut so that we wouldn't die of thirst. Showtime's casting directors struck yellow gold when they discovered their high school soccer team. Not only do the young cast members resemble their adult counterparts exceptionally, but they effectively match the emotional weight and dramatic intricacy required by the roles. I'm Melanie Linsky. My name is Sophie Elise, and, and I, I play Shauna. The junior players completely disappear into their parts, going so far as to consult with their grown-up doppelgangers to make sure their specific mannerisms and speech patterns match. Tanya and I talked about little things, like I called her one day on set, like, oh my god, do we say either or do we say either? Oh, I wow. think those are the small details that'll really tie it together. Canadian Sophie Nalise is already an award winner, and both English star Ella Purnell and American Sophie Thatcher started in the competitive world of musical theater. The rising stars show glorious promise for their talent and careers, and the mainstream world is now taking notice on the Yellow Jacket stage. I'm pretty sure it was that they wouldn't ruin the hunt. More like has men needed something to blame their failures on. I guess that hasn't changed. Number three, the veteran cast. The ensemble members with a bit more experience under their belt are also here and happy to show just what that experience has taught them. I'm Dave, the manager. Hi, Dave. Heavyweights include Academy Award nominee Juliette Lewis and award-winning New Zealander Melanie Linsky. Tawny Cypress continues her House of Cards momentum, and it's all capped off with our favorite friendly ghost-loving 90s star, Christina Ricci. What is this? Hear me! That's what makes the whole thing work! In particular, Lewis and Ricci shine. 
each carrying a different version of manic unpredictability that suggests they're just seconds away from snapping. I don't see a car. We could go back into town, check it out, get some wings, come back later. Or that works too. It's fitting for this period piece to feature the return of such long-serving superstars, as they proudly show that their talent and creative passions are still as ripe as ever. You ever think about what our lives would have been like if, um, you know, it didn't happen? Yeah, sometimes. Number two, complicated women. I wasn't sure how I'd feel, but I think it'll be good to reconnect with some old friends. We're in a renaissance of female representation in the media, and it welcomes stories like Yellow Jackets. The show's writing and production crew carry a strong female presence, and they've crafted a troupe of spellbindingly complex female characters. The Yellow Jackets teens may squabble and gossip, but they also bond, laugh, and love each other like real people. Same-sex partners receive bona fide representation among some of the most amiable characters. You always win, anyway. Yeah, why do you think I like to play? There's also a place for midlife crises, including marriage problems and aging feelings of unfulfillment. Best of all, these dynamics feel natural and inherent to the story, rather than boxes checked off for a political agenda. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. So I do what I can, not just for her, for me. Women are taking a powerful stand at today's podium, and this is the way to do it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, fierce originality. Lottie? Aren't you cold? Yeah. In an era of adaptations, spin-offs, and sequels, it seems that original concepts play second fiddle exceptions to the reboot rule. While some reimaginings are welcome, it's a breath of fresh wilderness air when writers return to the caveman days of simple inspiration. Don't do that. I get that you're scared too. But don't act like you have any clue what's happening out here. While Yellow Jackets does borrow conceptually from stories like Lord of the Flies and real-life disasters like Andy's Flight 571, it spins reused ideas into an unfamiliar dramatic web. Yellow Jackets boldly hangs plot in the ominous background of character drama. It trusts audiences to accept a logistical depiction of survival that also happens to feature seances and supernatural possession. And its apparent success is encouraging proof that audiences are hungry for new television that dares to dream outside the black box. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.